campaign name reminds me of what the life history of this congregation has been. We were started by Harry Phillips, who was a refugee fleeing the Mexican Revolution and came here to work among other refugees and to provide support and encouragement to them as they were trying to build new lives. And shortly after he began his work, the House of Neighborly Service was established to provide social services for the same population that was in need coming out of and fleeing very desperate circumstances in Mexico. And one of the things that the House of Neighborly Service did was provide social services and support to the families that were becoming residents in this West Side community. And those same families now are turning around and helping our church provide the opportunity to support students from this neighborhood today through our Vamos Ya program, which provides after-school homework assistance and encouragement in education to the kids that are both elementary, junior, and senior high ages so that they can be successful in the same way that these ancestors have been successful. Ever since 1929, when we moved to this historic uh, facility that we're in, the congregation and the House of Neighborly Service lived and worked out of the very same building and the building feels that use uh, for uh, close to 100 years of constant use. And we've been committed through that entire time to use every penny that we get to provide for the community the kinds of services and blessings that we have received throughout the years. And so we're in a position now where we need to ask for help from other folks. Uh, we were originally built uh, with the help of Presbyterians nationwide and we're making the appeal now to Presbyterians in our time to help us be able to continue the legacy of service that we've been providing to this community for over a hundred years. We'd like to do it for another hundred years, but we need our building to be in good shape so that that can happen. Throughout the years there were many people who invested in the development of leadership in this congregation. And that investment in leadership development has paid off in the life of our community. Ex Vasquez, who was a legend uh, in this neighborhood as the Boy Scout troop leader for nearly 50 years, trained up boys and raised up Eagle Scouts from this neighborhood uh, throughout his entire career. And now his son, Buddy, has uh, taken up the helm of the Boy Scout troop. So we feel grateful to have been invested in in this way so that we can now turn around and make the same kind of investment in the lives of young men and women uh, who are part of our neighborhood today. Another wonderful piece of legacy for us is that Luis Vargas, who grew up as a kid in one of our programs and in this neighborhood, is now the lead architect in redesigning this building for the years in front of us. And so we feel a tremendous gift of, of beauty from the generations that have come before. And now we have young men from this congregation and from this neighborhood who are investing their talents in creating a thing of beauty uh, for the generations that will come after us. So we feel like we're having the opportunity to hand along a legacy that we've inherited. My family landed in this neighborhood back in the 93. We ended up coming by and driving by H&S and my mom saw this beat up, old, dirty, nasty house. And the very first day that we spent the night at our house, uh, my sisters and I were laying in bed and we thought it was, we thought it was great. We thought it was beautiful that we were looking at the stars through the roof. Having a park right across the street was just a bonus. We literally had no backyard, no front yard, but having that park was just, as kids, we just, you cross the alley and you're right there. I got involved with the House of Teens. Um, during that time, I was uh, in college already. And my mom said, well, they open it every Tuesday and you should go see what it's like. So I went over, I introduced myself to Claire and I told her I lived right across the street that uh, H&S held a special place in my heart just because I had grown up here. And I was very curious what she was doing with all these kids because by now I had heard some of the talk of what was going on. Somebody asked me, hey, would you like to go in this retreat? It was actually, they were calling it a team building. And we were gonna go through zip lines and we were gonna camp and it was beautiful out there. I mean, it's an experience that you never forget. It's just going out there and spending time with your friends just in the cabin. To me, it became something real, something that I was a part of, the house of teens. They just need somewhere to go. I mean, I, I know that firsthand. While I was in college, um, again, being limited with income and all that, my parents didn't have enough money to buy me a computer. I remember coming home and I told my dad, I was like, you know, I gotta, I gotta have access to something, I can't do it. 
the library closes, I can't go anywhere. I gotta be able to put this together and print it. Right around that time, the secretary for Divine Redeemer was uh, Martha. And Martha lived across the street. She said, you know, I don't have one here, but we have one at, at the church. And I stopped working around this time. Would it help if you could come on over for your house and you get about an hour to do it and, and you can print it there? I said, you know what, yeah. So I would come home, I would draft everything, make sure everything was perfect because I had one hour to type it and print it. Now you, you think of how important that was. I mean, would I be able to do my homework? I don't know, maybe there would have been another method, but just the fact that I had somewhere across the street and h &S providing me that, it was just so important in my life. Now to think about it and to have the opportunity to have gone to college and received numerous scholarships also from h &S, years down the road, I was like, I remember you did this. It's like, what can I do? How, how can I repay? She goes, well, just find somebody who needs that and do the same thing. But for me, it was an impact to one person. I wanted to have the impact to not just one, but try to reach more than one. And so when this opportunity came up, I was like, man, here's my chance. I can do something. I can provide something that I know in architecture and design, and I can actually do it so we can affect more than just one person just to give the space the care and the reparations and the remodel that it needs. I mean, I just, I see it going another 100, 200, 300 years, and there's gonna be a lot more Luises that come by here and are gonna need the help and they're gonna get it. I just know it. I just know it. We are a small family congregation that is deeply committed to the families that are part of it and to the families that live in the neighborhood here with us. And that, particular unique dimension of this church is what has kept me here. We truly are about building hope here at Divine Redeemer and House of Neighborly Service. We were the recipients of blessings that we could never have anticipated or earned. And it's our turn now to be a blessing to the community around us, not just today, but for the next hundred years, the next century of service. Thanks for your support.